Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, we're gonna talk about run length encoding in the context of the Coco dataset. Now, run length encoding, the concept is not originating with the Coco dataset. This exists elsewhere. And so if you're looking for guidance on how run length encoding works, I think you'll learn a lot from these two videos. But in the context of the Coco dataset, we basically have these images and then each object of interest has a mask. So you'll have like white pixels in the image represent the object of interest and black pixels equal the background. So run length encoding is just a way of compressing those images down into a smaller format so that we can include all of those masks in a data set without taking up tons of space. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can convert into run length encoded format. So we're going to encode and then in the next video, we're going to show how to decode that. And we're going to be using Python exclusively for this. Now, Python can be a little slow. So we're going to do some tricks to show how to speed that up and do it with NumPy instead of just the naive raw Python solution. Now, I first just want to show really quick what this looks like in the Coco dataset format. So this is a tutorial that we have on immersivelimit.com. And if you scroll down quite a ways, then you'll get to how these annotations look. Most of the annotations inside of the Coco dataset look like this. They are 2D coordinates that basically equate to a, a human who has seen an image, and let's see if I can find an image really quick, and has clicked points on the image that represent where a specific object is. So that's what those 2D coordinates are. They make up a polygon. Now, there are some cases where it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, and the cases where they did that were like crowds of people or think of like a basket of oranges where they didn't want to like uh, draw a circle around every single piece of fruit. And so they just shaded it in um, instead. And so they had a mask and they wanted to convert that into a smaller format. And so that shows up as a run length encoded string. So these are, these are numbers of pixels. And let's explain exactly what that means. So they're counts. And then also a size. So the size of the image typically is what this means. And then the number of counts. The number of counts added up altogether should equate to the size, like the height multiplied by the width. So you have the same number of pixels represented here. So just an example here, I've made this really small image. I've, I've zoomed in, like it looks like 9,000% here. Um, but basically the idea of run length encoding is rather than storing the value of every single pixel, you count the number of empty pixels, and then you count the number of um, basically black pixels in a row, then white pixels, then black, then white, then black, then white. And so you get this alternating array. So in this case, this is eight pixels high. And if I switch into pencil mode, it's a little easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten would be the first value. And then we have one. So this is now a second value. So 10, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 10, one, six, two, and so on. So this, this keeps going like this. I did a video on this a while back and I actually got it wrong. And it's one of the most popular videos on the channel. So it drives me nuts that I got it wrong. I thought originally that the direction it went was row by row, but it actually goes column by column. So that's just something to watch out for as you're working with this. And obviously in most cases you have much larger images, but it is a lot easier to demonstrate what's going on here with a much smaller image. So what I've done here is I've uh, actually used Google Collab to create a Jupyter Notebook that will sort of demonstrate how this works. And uh, you need a few different things. NumPy, the Python image library, PIL. Uh, IPython just is to display the images. And then time is just for a, a performance counting that we're gonna do later. And just as an example, I wanted to do, I recreated that, um, this right here, as a NumPy array. So you can see that it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
that equates to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? Now, in case you're wondering why I just talked about doing it from top to bottom, column by column, but now I'm going from left to right, row by row, it is because they just do it differently. Uh, NumPy arrays turning into images do it the row by row way, and the run length encoding just goes column by column. So different implementations, um, you end up with different results if you do it different ways, but you can get to where you need to be if you pay attention and make sure that you're doing it the way that the code expects you to do it. And then I also created another one that's much bigger, that's sort of a checkerboard pattern of eight pixels by eight pixels of black, then white, then black, then white. Okay, so we're going to run this really quick, and then we will run this one too. And then we multiply them by 255 just because our images are going to be um, fully white when they're a value of 255, fully black when they are just zero. And so we, I've basically set it up. So if I run this cell, then it's going to use the small image. If I run this one, it'll use the large image. So let's start with the small. And you can kind of see it. It's very small. Um, it's, it says 10 by eight. Well, this is actually the, this is the width by the height that we're printing out. And if I zoom in, you can kind of see it's that same image. Um, although it's very difficult to see. And as I'm zooming in, it doesn't like me zooming in very much. And it blurs it out. Okay, I've gone way too far. Let's see if I can get back to where I was. There we go. All right, so let's see if I can actually make this just a little bigger, a little bit easier to see. So we're working with this um, image here and the naive solution here, meaning like the, the solution you might come to if you're just thinking, how would I do this in your own head? And honestly, this would probably work perfectly if we were doing this in a language like C++ that goes very fast. But Python is not nearly as fast as C++, and so you get some serious performance hits when you do things like this, where what we're doing is basically saying for each, um, each column along the width, and then for each pixel within that column, then we're going to get the current pixel value and then basically say, if the last pixel doesn't equal the current pixel, meaning we're switching between black and white, then we're going to append a count to the end of our list. And then we're going to reset that count and then reset which one was last. If we're not switching, or even if we are, we're going to increment that counter. So we're basically just counting. The idea of this algorithm is basically what I was just doing manually, just go you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a switch here. So now we're going to add that to the list and then start incrementing a new counter. We only get to one before we have to do it again. That's the idea here with this particular one. And then we're just going to return the list there. The only other thing is we, we add on whatever remaining count there is at the end. So if we run this and then here, then we get this value or these values right here. So 10, 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, 45. So you can see it's got the 1, 2, 3, 3, and then all the pixels in the way, and then the remainder of the pixels here. If you want to get this code, we'll make sure to have links in the description of the video, of course. Now, this method tends to be pretty slow because we're iterating, iterating over every single pixel in the image and we're storing variables and doing checks and things like that. It's just not very fast. And generally, when you have something that's going very slow in Python and you have lists of things, what you want to be doing is using NumPy. NumPy uses C behind the curtain, so we're actually taking advantage of the speed of C but we are able to use it in Python. There's, it does kind of get a little tricky. So figuring this out was quite challenging, but I did manage to accomplish this with NumPy using some tricks and then make it go way faster.
So the idea is first off, we take this array. So this is the array, uh, basically the small version of this array. Every time I scroll up here, it seems to lag, but the, the smaller image array. And the first thing we need to do is um, transpose it and flatten it. So the result ends up looking like a list basically like this. We've basically taken it column by column and just put all of those pixel values end to end. So we have one long list. Then we need to figure out where does it switch between zero and 255 here. So what we're doing here is we're taking the flattened array and we're this first part here, we're actually adding a zero to the end. And then this second part here, we're adding a zero to the beginning. And we're saying, where does, where do these not equal each other? So if you can think of it, it's almost like we're taking one, um, taking the same list and shifting it by one and then saying, where don't they equal? And that, is going to be the list of positions where there's a switch. And so we're saying, where does it not equal zero? And then we get these switches. So the result ends up being at index 10, 11, 17, 19, 24, 27, 32, and 35. So these are the places in this image where we're switching from black to white. Then we, all we have to do at this point is we have to do a little bit of work to um, figure out what the counts are here. If you think about it, all we really have to do is say, what's this value minus this value? And what's this value minus this value and this value minus this value and so on. So that's really what we're accomplishing here is we are um, basically taking a value and putting it on the end so that we can subtract one from the other. But in order to make it work, we have to put a zero on one end and we get this run length encoding array. And then the last thing we have to do, but I didn't do it right here in this example, is just add on this, um, not, sorry, the, the, this 45 right here is the same idea. You just figure out how many, how many are left, and then you add it onto the end. So you can see that these values are the same, 10, 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, and then 45 is missing. If we put it all together, then we get this encode fast function. And then we can print out our result and we get that same result there. Now to give you an idea of how fast the difference is between these, I've set up some performance counters. So basically it just takes a timestamp at the beginning and at the end. And in between, I call the encode slow a thousand times um, and then here I do encode fast a thousand times and you're not going to see a big difference here because we're using that really small image. So not much difference here, but if we go up here and we run it on the large image. Okay. So here's the large image. It's just a checkerboard image that we made here. And if it'll let me scroll down, it gets a little laggy when I've got that one big cell up. Um, then uh, looks like I have not gone far enough yet. So we want to run basically this same thing again. And this time with the larger image. And the difference is 3.5 seconds versus 0.2 seconds. So you can see that this is a huge performance increase. And if you were to be running this on a huge data set of hundreds of thousands of images, you're going to save a ton of time. So this is kind of the reason why we would do this. All right, that's it for this video. We showed how to do the encoding phase of run length encoding. And in the next video, we will be showing how to do the decode phase. So same idea, we'll show how to do it, the naive approach, and then how to do it with a faster approach. One thing just to note is that, you know, like I said, this is a Python approach, not a C approach. So it's not going to be as fast as it could be, but the benefit is you're not having to take a dependency on that C library, like the uh, Coco API, which tends not to work very well on Windows and is 
even still a little bit of uh, difficulty on Linux. So it's just easier if you don't need any other functionality from there to just use this functionality in Python. While I have you here, I just wanted to also say thank you so much again to our patrons and to all the all of you who have bought courses in the past. The Coco dataset course that we've made has been really popular and kind of in the same vein here, how to make a Coco dataset from scratch. We are thinking of updating that very soon, so stay tuned for that. We'll make sure to post links uh, here in the description if that does come out. And the reason I say thank you so much uh, is I wanted to point out that not only do we have a new camera, which I mentioned in the last video, thanks to our supporters, but also I just got this new microphone, which is a really nice microphone and is going to make audio editing so much easier. Kayla, my wife, does so much awesome work on the back end. Uh, she goes through every single word I say in audio and she cleans it all up, removes all the background noise, all that stuff. This microphone is going to really help her job and allow us to create more videos and do a better job for you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and we'll see you in the next video.